This podcast is part of the Listen Frederick Podcast Network. To learn more, visit listenfrederick.com. Hello and welcome to the Fedora Files. I am Gregory Fedora. Thank you for tuning in, watching, listening, however you found it. Uh, This episode is brought to you by Happy Little Monsters, Volumes 1 through 4. You can pick them up. Number 4 just came out a few weeks ago in January of 2024. You can check all these out. It's got great little stories on each thing, great artwork done by me. Uh, And I go through a bunch of various different creatures that are said to live around the world and their stories and hopefully get you started on an adventure of the mind. So check those out. Uh, They make great gifts and they are all on Amazon and they're about 15 bucks for paperback, $20 for hardcover. So it's not super expensive and you get a cool little book. If you want me to get you a signed edition, please message me and we can work something out and I can get it shipped to you. Um, It might be a little bit more expensive because I have to order it, get it and then ship it to you. But You know, maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll have to see. Anyway, but feel free to message me. And if there's a monster you would like to see me tell you the tale about, send it to me. And I might add it into a future volume. I'm currently working on volumes five through seven. I'm hopefully going to get those done in the next, uh, well, five in the next couple months and seven by the end of the year. So here we go. This week's episode is a... on an artifact that I find fascinating. I think it's cool. There's a lot of lore behind it. It's actually one that I really thought they should have gone with with Indiana Jones because if you watch the Indiana Jones series, the best ones deal with Nazis and biblical artifacts. So, you know, you had the original uh, where uh, where they went after the Ark of the Covenant. Then they had the one uh, where they uh, went after uh, the holy grail with his dad uh the most recent indiana jones they brought the nazis back but they were going after this other artifact that really was kind of like oh, okay but for me indiana jones works best in the world war ii era you have to have nazis and a biblical artifact and the reason is that hitler was really into the occult but also biblical things uh not that he was in any shape or form a religious person but he would I guess he was religious in that he was a cultic and he wanted these things that he considered had power. So he really was after the Ark of the Covenant. He was really after the Holy Grail. And he was really after this next artifact known as the Spear of Destiny. And I really felt this is the one that they should have gone with with Indiana Jones and they just never did. Um, the, the Spear of Destiny, it's also known as the Holy Lance or the Lance of Longinus. Longinus. Uh, or the Holy Spear. Now, this is the the spear that when when Jesus was on the cross, uh, traditionally to you know get the person to die on the cross quicker, they would break their legs and the person would suffocate. Um, it was just standard procedure. Well, there was a biblical prophecy that the Messiah would be on, hung on the cross or would would be. Uh, crucified in some way shape or form and but his bones would not be broken now a lot of people this the spear didn't kill jesus but what happened was they went to go break his legs and they're like hey we think he's dead and so the uh, centurion there who uh, by tradition has been named longinus uh stabbed him in the side and out came blood and water because he had punctured an area and they're like okay he's dead so we don't need to do that and then they took him off the cross. Um, and had he not been dead, that spear would have killed him. But he was he, he had long since passed. So um, the reference to this uh, spear is in John. Uh, the uh, different prophecies that mention this idea of him being, you know, unbroken, uh, comes from Psalm 3420, if you want to look it up. One, one of the big deals that people point to to say Jesus was the Messiah was uh, he had to be the perfect sacrifice. Uh, and in the law of Moses mentioned in Exodus 1246 and Numbers 9, 
12, it talks about how the lamb for the sacrifice had to be without broken bones. And so that was a significant thing. And so they pointed to that, you know, Jesus was not, did not have broken bones and was the perfect sacrifice for all of humanity. So these, these are all things to get this going. So anyway, so that the spear was kind of a, a big deal. Now, the name Longinus is a, a traditional name. Uh, the name actually comes from, uh, you would call it apocryphal gospel. Uh, it's the gospel of Nicodemus is where we get the name Longinus. Um, no one knows what the centurion's name and all the other gospels. It's just a centurion. Uh, he, he also is the one who uh, says that at the crucifixion, truly, this was the son of God. So uh, you can take it. Maybe he converted at that moment. No one knows because there's no story onward with this. But so anyway, so we have this, this spear that, you know, and in religious and especially in Catholicism, these things are relics. They're meaningful. Uh, they just they're part of the story that many people hold dear. Um, but uh, the only place we get along this is Nicodemus, is which was written in 586 AD, so a long time past. But I just want to point out where we get the names and stuff. So this relic of uh, the spear of destiny uh was a big deal um so it was believed that whoever held this beer this is some of the folklore that right, would be uh unstoppable which is like uh along with the ark of the covenant these things these things like the the the, the king or whoever had the spear was going to be uh powerful uh, a lot of people believe Charlemagne had it at one point. Uh, and so Hitler wanted this because, you know, he wanted the Third Reich to be powerful. I mean, I don't think he put together that the power of it would be coming from God. So if you're out doing horrendous things like the Nazis were, this spear isn't a magic talisman that, okay, just because you have it, God's like, oh, no, they have the spear. I got to be behind them. Oh, they have the ark. I have to fight for them. Now, God, God's able to say, you no, know, I'm not going to help you out. You're a horrible person, and your Third Reich is bad news. I'm not helping you. And anyway, and if the folklore is true, Hitler did obtain the spear at some point. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Uh, there in about 614 A.D., uh, the, the Muslim general uh, had the spear, and in a peace treaty with Constantinople or Const Constantine, or uh, I guess not, it it would be uh, not Constantine. It, it's at Constantinople. Uh, they delivered it kind of as like a peace offering. Like here's this thing you guys care about. Like they didn't care about, but here it is. Um, and so it was kind of a, a given thing. Uh, and this was in about 614 AD. Um, so they're trying to make peace, like, let's not fight. And then again, so it was given there. And then in about 1244, part of the spear was given to Emperor Baldwin II. Now, it's just like the tip. And uh Another part was given supposedly to Louis Louis of France the ninth, and he he attained part of the spear. So now we got parts of the spear all over the place, and at some point there are three spears that all are being claimed to be the spear of destiny. Uh, the the one that a, a lot of people truly think it is uh, is in the tomb of Pope Innocent the eighth. Uh, supposedly he is the one that had the actual one that came from Constantinople. And uh, uh, when there was a big battle, the Turks got it, and then they returned it to uh, to the Pope as kind of like, hey, you know, you keep this. And when the Pope died, it was buried with him. Um, but then at some point, there's these two other spears that all look down. They they all look like uh, 
Roman spears like that a centurion would have. So the thing is, there are a lot of centurions and a lot of spears, but somehow these three spears end up in different places or parts of a spear end up in different places around Europe. Um, now they, but you know, so we believe the one that's with Pope Innocent is the one that was given to uh, the the emperor in Constantinople as a gift. It was then given to the Pope and so on and so forth. Um, but now we have these two other spears floating around. Uh, the the one spear ended up in an exhibit in Hofsburg Museum in Vienna, and this is the one that. Hitler obtained. Uh, he Hitler was after the Ark, the Holy Grail, and the spear. And as far as we know, he only obtained this one spear. And again, it looked just like the spear that supposedly wasn't Pope Innocent's tomb and so forth. So we had these spears and quadruple, triple thread of spears in these different areas. Um, and it was then found, uh, he, he had taken it from the museum. It was found in his Nuremberg fortress in April 30th, uh, just, or actually no, in January 6th, April 30th, 1945 was when, uh, Hitler shot himself in his bunk bunker, uh, on January 6th, 1946, the treasures from that were stolen from the Vienna museum were found in his Nuremberg fortress and the spear was amongst them. So he did obtain a spear. Was it the true spear destiny? Don't know, but it didn't help. So he still lost. Um, a man named Trevor Ravencroft, which is interesting because if you, uh, if you watch the Indiana Jones thing series, uh, the love of Indy's life is Marion Ravenwood. And this Ravenwood guy uh, was Indy's mentor. Well, there was a man named Trevor Ravencroft. Uh, he, he compiled an exhaustive account of the story of the spear. Uh, he, it was basically the manner of which it influenced Hitler and his occult philosophy and why he was after it. Uh, he, he he taught he went over the uh, the lore about it, um, the it, why it was such an important artifact as well as a relic to the different churches. Um, now, the spear was simply just the point. Uh, the the wood it was attached to a wooden thing, so obviously over a thousand years a wooden thing is going to deteriorate. Uh, the spear itself was uh, metal. It, uh, the way it looked is like uh, two pieces of metal, a metal piece in the middle, uh, tightened together with uh, leather, and um, and that's kind of where it was held together. Now, you can still go see the actual spear that Hitler was after. It is back in the Vienna Museum. Um, it's part of the uh, Hofburg Treasure House. It's still there. Now you the other two, two, uh, you have the one full. You have another one that's full in the tomb of Pope Innocent, which I don't think you can see. I don't think they opened up the tomb of Pope Innocent for people to check out and see this spear. Um, and the third is just parts of the spear, and where those parts have gone, nobody knows. So it's just tips of the spear, parts of the spear broken off as a relic, and they're located we don't know kind of vanish but we do have two spears um will they grant people power i don't think they will i don't they i don't think there's any power in the spear i think it's just a a thing that people will like wow this it, it's for people to be like when they see it like man th this might have been the thing that touched Jesus and it's a, a, something tangible because as humans we like tangible things so um, the tangible helps us perceive the intangible um, so that's why these relics are a big deal that's why finding these things people were like really wanting to 
And for me, it was a missed opportunity for the Indiana Jones series. And maybe, you know, once Harrison Ford, like, lets go of the character because he's kind of holding on to it, they can reboot Indiana Jones and do some more fun, young adventures like when he was young. Because when you get, you know, 80-year-old Indiana Jones is not so much fun to watch. Although the last movie, I enjoyed it, but it had the Nazis, it had Indy. But I think it like kind of fell short in that like you need the biblical and there's a lot of biblical relics you could go after that, uh, you know, would be cool. But they haven't. So Spear Destiny, it's out there. Which one is the real one? Don't know. Are either of them real? Don't know. I mean, would they have kept on it? I mean, I, I assume that maybe if this longinous character that, you know. He is a real person. Don't know that's his name. He actually, the, the Catholic Church did have a Saint Longinus. And I looked him up and they do, uh, he, he was venerated. Let me tell you, uh, Saint Longinus was venerated in 1638. And uh, they believe that you know, that's where his, there's a statue of him in uh, the St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. And above the statue, uh, they they don't make any real claims of authenticity, but he is believed to be, you know, the the guy. But uh, tradition, again, long enough, we don't know what his real name is for sure. We don't know what he ended up doing. If he did convert, perhaps he held on to the spear himself, knowing that this was part of his conversion story and maybe it was passed down through family and eventually it made its way to Pope Innocent. Don't know. Or it made its way to the Vienna um, Museum. We don't know what happened to the spear. But that is the Spear of Destiny. Do you, do you, where do you think it is? Do you think it's important to find these different artifacts and relics? Do you think it's cool? Uh, what artifact or relic would you like me to seek out and really find more information? I, I enjoy doing this because this is some of the things, not only do I like monsters and folklore and stuff, I, I like archaeology and these different things that kind of vanished. Um, one of the things I, and the next one I really want to get into is the Holy Grail because uh, there's, I think that's another cool thing, is another thing that the Nazis were after and there's been a lot of convolution about what the Holy Grail was. There's people who twisted it in this weird, like, bloodline thing. And I, I think, you no, know, the Holy Grail is a literal cup. It is a grail. And I'd love to delve deeper into that uh, mythos and folklore. But the Lance, which one do you think is a real one? Do you think either of them are? Or do you just think it's been lost and we will never see it again. So uh, thank you for stopping in, joining me. And remember to, as always, stay safe and keep searching. The Fedora. Check out FedoraCRT.com today.